and we have ourselves the biggest Mavericks win of the bubble of the NBA restart with a resounding and I don't mean resounding as in point spread I mean resounding in terms of statement victory the Mavericks net a four point win in overtime over the team with the best record in the NBA this season the Milwaukee Bucks they sweep the season series against the best record in the NBA. They beat them in Milwaukee without Luka, and now they come to a neutral court and beat them again. This is an incredible win. This is a great bounce back win for the Mavericks here. They take a 136-132 victory, and there's a lot to talk about in this game. The Mavericks got off to a pretty good start, raced out to an 11 point lead early on, now, it started to kind of wobble away from them a little bit there. Milwaukee went on their run, and it, it kind of fell back and forth. Like, it was trading runs. But where this game really, really took its big turn was in the third quarter. The Mavericks in the third quarter took a 31-20 to 20 scoring edge. The third quarter that's largely been so detrimental to the Mavericks this season instead became a point of strength and it allowed them to turn the tide and then they didn't even stop at that they continued that momentum into the fourth quarter Dallas basically went on a run where they were re-establishing themselves Milwaukee had been up I believe it was nine prior to the run Dallas sees control but the Bucks to their credit they two or three times throughout the fourth quarter every time Dallas would get about seven to ten points ahead Milwaukee would respond and it looked like Milwaukee finally was pulling ahead. Just like we saw in the Clippers game a couple days ago, Milwaukee took a seven point lead with about a minute 45 left. And Dallas, all intents and purposes, everything we've seen with this team this season, 29th rated as a team in the clutch. And what we've seen, obviously the last 39 seconds against Houston with a seven point lead, you go on to lose that game in OT. It's the Mavericks third OT game, but they responded. What's more, they were brilliant in the clutch. Luka Doncic, career high, 19 assists in this game. And here's the thing, man. We can talk about how the Mavericks have made a living. Uh, going into this game, the Mavericks were leading all teams in the bubble in terms of getting to the line. And I think they ultimately got to where their numbers were by the end of the game, but they were not leading in that category. Milwaukee was dominating getting to the foul line. While Dallas was shooting a great percentage, they weren't shooting at the same numbers, and Luka was getting hammered throughout the game. You saw guys taking very physical shots with him, a lot of hits to the face, him getting sprawled out on the court, and he wasn't getting a lot of calls. Like There were three or four calls that Luka just got battered and thrown to the floor and didn't get the call. Meanwhile, George Hill the other way is getting a tic-tac call at the rim. Like, how does that make sense? I digress. Luka brilliant in this game. Throughout the clutch, his drive and kick, Milwaukee had no answer. Milwaukee is statistically the best defense in the NBA this season, and the Mavericks as a whole, but largely Luka carved them up. Now, to a lot of these other guys' credit, Tim Hardaway Jr. had a rough game, although he did hit a big three in that stretch there when they were down seven with about a minute 49 left and other guys came up big dorian finney smith career high 27 points he is rolling the past few games here i think he's got 16 12 17 and now 27 in the bubble i literally just said after the clippers post game show i didn't know that he could i didn't think that he could necessarily reach another level and i don't know that for a long-term consistency standpoint that he can what i can say is that he has been brilliant for the Mavericks. He is giving them that option. Tonight, he is the third man. Crazy. Dorian Finney-Smith knocks down six three-pointers. That is a career high for him. Gets 11 boards all over the place. Energy guy making defensive plays, hustling after loose balls, keeping, keeping it alive, and giving the Mavericks a chance to pull off an incredible comeback for them. And uh, hey, I would be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to our unicorn. KP did work. 26 points. Now, his his field goal percentage isn't crazy high. In fact, it's it's a little on the low end. But he he played well. 29 or 26 points, 11 boards, three assists. He had several plays where he was slashing to the basket and dunking with a 
authority, dunking on Giannis, driving baseline, attacking. He was getting to the line. He was knocking down free throws, as he's done throughout the bubble, shooting 88.5% coming into the game. I think here he had, let me see what his percentage was in this game, 7 of 7 at the line. So he keeps the good times rolling for the Mavericks. Luka, 9 of 10 at the line. He knocks down two clutch free throws with about 27 seconds left, I want to say. Uh, less than 30 seconds left in the game. Luka knocks down a pair of big stones free throws that knot the game up and ultimately sends it to overtime after George Hill misses a good look from three. And Dallas did not turn back. Dallas rattled off a 7-0 run to close out the regulation, knot the game up at, I want to say it was 112 all. And then Dallas went on to score the first nine points of overtime. Now, Milwaukee did answer with a six or seven point run of their own, but Dallas ultimately kept making plays. Luka kept driving to the cup, kicking out, and Dorian Finney Smith kept making huge three point shots. I said earlier, Tim Hardaway Jr. knocked down a big one during that run to, to really kind of kick off that 7-0 run to close out regulation. But Dorian Finney-Smith, my God, and Maxi Kleba take a bow with some of these plays. Luka was straight styling on some of these guys with these assists. The drive and kick, the vision, tremendous pinpoint precision passes leading to wide open threes. And the, the pass he throws through his own legs to Maxi for the and one dunk and Maxi converts it at the line, that was in. That At that point, I stopped worrying, honestly, about the game. Now, I know Milwaukee still had a couple chances there, but I largely took a breath and just was like, oh, they're going to do it. Like, Luka's, Luka's pissed off. He's getting hit in the face and he's getting pushed around, but he's not letting it. In fact, if anything, he's playing angry, but he's playing with controlled aggression. And it's allowing him to elevate to another level. Tremendous all around for the Mavericks here. I love the grit. I love the heart. I love the hustle from these guys. They've heard all the criticisms. Even with their one win that they got previously, they had to scratch and claw and largely play from behind against the Kings. The Kings are not a great team. And so it kind of gave the presentation of, you know, Anyone they're going up against, they're falling short. Now, Phoenix is 5-0, and so it's a weird situation there. But you lost by two in a game you should have won. You should have beaten Houston. Really, the Clippers game is the only game that just completely fell away from you in the clutch. And, you know, it is what it is. But Mavericks make a, a great answer here. I, I absolutely love this. Luka gets another triple-double here, obviously. It's his 17th of the season. He is leading uh, the league in that category. Let me see here. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, so I, I mentioned earlier how strong the third quarter was for the Mavericks. Uh, about a minute, this is from Bobby Carrello on Twitter. About a minute into the third quarter, the Mavericks were down 11. Carlisle takes a timeout, and for the next 11 minutes, Dallas does its, does work, and outscores them 31 to 20 that's a turning point of this game because milwaukee was in firm control and dallas just kept answering just kept pulling it pulling it out of the fire every time it felt like it was getting away from them and you really really got to appreciate that bobby carrello also points out on twitter luka Doncic is now tied with clyde drexler for 16th all time on the triple double list with 25 career triple doubles next up on the list are ben simmons and michael jordan who both have 28. now obviously you got uh big o and you've got russell westbrook and even harden have pushed that number astronomically out there jason kidd you know once you get to the top of the list you're talking an obscene number of triple doubles but you know, triple doubles haven't really been a major trend in basketball until more so a modern age for the most part. And so you do have an interesting situation here where Luka is already in top 20 category all time in triple doubles, really nearly just outside the uh, top 15. So future's bright for him being 21 in that regard. Uh, let me see here. Let me see. Uh, 
This is from Mavs PR on Twitter. Luca recorded 15 and 10 in the first half tonight. His 10 assists in the first half mark a career high in assists for any half. His previous was nine, which he had posted twice. So this marks his first career points assist double double in the first half and fourth career first half double double. So very, very nice response here. One thing I loved about how Dallas handled this, other than the fact that they just kept relentlessly attacking Milwaukee and their shooters actually stepped up and did what they needed to do, not so much Hardaway, certainly not Curry. Curry came back in off of his calf injury and uh, he was not very good even though he started in this game kind of put me in a bad spot the fact the two shooters i most talked up for the mavericks in the bubble are laying eggs but hey at least maxi one of my x factors factored in big to this game uh Giannis, the mavericks making him as much as possible shoot from outside Giannis, ugly night at the line he does hit two big free throws in ot that kind of keep the bucks in it for just a little bit longer but he air balls and just bricks threes consistently in this game when he takes them and he had three or four attempts and none of them looked very close in fact one of them they actually got lucky because he airballs it but it falls right into the hands of one of his teammates who kicks it out to george hill for a big three at the time that felt like it could have been uh nut punch city for the mavericks and kind of squ- uh silenced not squandered kind of uh you know squashed any hopes that they had for a comeback but instead does not work that way yeah tim hardaway jr two of nine in this game one of six from three uh i do think he got going like i said he hit that one big three that at least amounted to a lot before dodo just went nuts and hit like three more but yes this is a fantastic win here mavs pr again points out with a 30 point triple double tonight luca has joined oscar robertson and russell westbrook as the only players in nba history with 12 or more 30 point triple doubles in a single season tremendous tremendous work there uh in this case let me see let me see the luca free throws were with 21 seconds not 29 i see the mavericks as tim mcmahon points out on twitter their achilles heel all season has been the clutch Instead, they took the top-ranked Bucks defense, and they generated nothing but clean look after clean look on drive and kickouts by Luka. Luka absolutely controlled this game. KP, he does foul out with about a minute 24 left. That was a little bit of a kind of clinch moment for me. It, this comes minutes after Giannis appeared to foul out, but then it's overturned on a successful challenge. That actually shows that Middleton fouled Luka first. And so Giannis checks back in. KP does get a bucket, but then he immediately fouls Giannis for his you know, sixth foul to foul him out. And so that felt like a little bit of a tense moment, but you just saw with the way the Mavericks were running that with Luka dealing like he was dealing and guys like Dorian Finney-Smith and Kleba stepping up, undrafted free agents, you just knew something was going right in their favor. Now... In this, one thing I like, I I know the video went up already earlier today talking about Shaq, talking about KP posting up more. The Mavericks went to KP a lot more in the clutch. Now, KP didn't necessarily put out big numbers in that regard, but I liked that they were trying to establish him down low a little bit more. Um, I'm not opposed to him, you know, working in that territory. I just don't want to take away from him what his strengths are. And you could tell at times he wasn't super comfortable there. The assumption is, hey, he can turn and shoot over anyone. But you see from a physicality standpoint, and a team that's very physical like the Bucks, how they could kind of throw him out. Even Wesley Matthews bothered him on an attempt. Now, that was more in the high post. That was nearly the free throw line. Tried to just kind of square up and shoot over the top. And not a good look. Now, Mavericks get a lucky break there. Milwaukee fumbles the rebound out of bounds. But still, not super comfortable with how that kind of played out. But I was thrilled to see that Dallas was going to KP. And I was intrigued to see that they were working a little bit more in that range. And he did reward them with one big bucket as well right before he fouled out. Uh, Let me see here. More from Bobby Corella on Twitter. Doncic has his third triple-double of the season with at least 30 points, 15 assists, and 10 rebounds. The rest of the NBA has one. That is LeBron James. If you change it to 30 points, 15 rebounds, and 10 assists, Doncic is one of two of these, and the rest is one. That's Jokic. So 
MVP announcement came out today. Not the winner, but your three finalists. It's LeBron, it's Giannis, and it's Harden. You know, I understand that top three, but I don't like that in all the talk kind of previewing it. They were putting, like, Damian Lillard's had a great year. Yeah, but Portland's on the outside looking in. Luka has been sensational this year. We're talking about a guy that's added it to his points per game average by nearly eight full points. You're talking about a guy that's in the running for most improved player, even though he should have been an all-star as a rookie. Like, he has been fantastic. And he's not even super efficient shooting the ball yet. If he can actually round into that a little bit better, good God, man, we're talking about an absolute machine. Now, it's also worth noting in this game, you saw a couple times where Luka actually got clean, just catch and shoot spot ups. Those are the threes Luka should be shooting. Now, when he's really cooking, yeah, the step back's okay. And he knocked down a couple of them in this game. But I don't like the degree of difficulty he often takes in these situations. And he takes one of those awkward falling out of bounds, fadeaway threes with like 30-something seconds left in OT, uh, misses it. Milwaukee goes the other way, and I think you get Giannis... Um, before he fouls out, I think you get Giannis at the line. I, I forget exactly what happened the other direction, but you have possessions like that where you're like, oh, I wanted a little bit, yeah, I wanted a better possession there on that. You, you use the full clock, shot clock, and that's great, but I, I want a little bit more control there. So if you can get him those situations where you're getting him more looks like that, again, Dallas needs a secondary ball handler who can really create. Trey Burke and Flashes can do that for you. He had 10 points here tonight, had some nice plays for Dallas, but they do not consistently have that guy. And, you know, when he's able to play, J.J. Barea has been able to do that, but you can't really rely on that at this point and him in this situation. So it is what it is here. Uh, let me see, let me see. Dorian Finney-Smith is just one of 10 Mavericks in the last 15 seasons with a 20-point, 10-board, 5-assist game. Again, pretty special for a guy that you got for like 3 for 12, 3 years, 12 million, I think, um, for this season. like you Or not this season, but like this past offseason, that's what you re-signed him for. Tremendous value. Luka in the bubble, 34, 12, and 15 was the Houston game. 29, 3, and 6. 34, 20, 12, 48, and 11. And then at this point in this game, he was sitting on 28, 13, and 10. Obviously ends up with 36, 19, and 14. He's had a 20 point or a 20 rebound game in the bubble and a nearly 20 assist game as well. He's had a 40 point game in the bubble. Like the dude is cooking on all levels. And his defense has been much, much improved here. So this is uh, this is one of the better wins for the Mavericks this year, I, I really think. Like going to Milwaukee and winning without Luka, winning in Philadelphia without Luka earlier this year, that was all great. But I really, really liked how the team kept responding. And they bucked two terrible trends that have gone against them all season. Those being the third quarter and clutch. They responded very well. So, yeah, I, I, I want to see how they, how they move forward from here. You got big minutes as well from other guys. Not necessarily big points, but I thought DeLon Wright had some good moments. Justin Jackson had a couple good moments. Uh, Trey Burke at one point, when the Mavericks were making their run in the third quarter, had a couple disruption plays where he not only basically rips Giannis, he, he baits him into a frustration foul on the break. Like... That came into play. Like, that, that's big. So I'm very, very encouraged by uh, what this team shows. When they, are, when they are clicking, they can compete with anybody. The problem is finding that consistency and more so finding that defensive spirit. Now, I know you give up 132 here, so you're like, hey, how could you really have that? Brooke Lopez went insane in the second quarter, I think it was, with 21 points. And in the game, drops 34, uh, basically... Yeah, he ties the honest in that regard, just two points behind Luka for leading in the game. And he was raining threes left and right as well. How many threes he hit? Six threes, six of 12. I mean, fantastic game from Lopez. And he, he even got an and one three on us. That really hurt at one point. Dallas in the fourth quarter had a four-point lead. He gets a four-point play out of the deal. So Milwaukee's got players. They're, they're the best defense. Giannis is probably going to repeat as MVP. 
and they've got all the shooting and veteran leadership and gritty players I think they need. I, I have a hard time seeing someone else coming out of the East, I think, at this point. Yeah, I, it's not out of the realm of possibility, but I, I think Milwaukee is primed to do that at this point. I mean, they're they're if they can win out, I think it is from here, they'll do the best record in franchise history, even surpassing um, their title team <laughs> with Kareem and all that. So... Yeah, they're they're in pretty good position. Uh, anything else I want to call out here real quick before I wrap this up? Chris Middleton, nice game, 21-6-11, and 11, 8 of 12 from the field. They had their big three as well, and then they had Bledsoe give them 15 as well. So Milwaukee got plenty, plenty up and down its roster here. I felt like a big, a big facet of this game, Giannis, one of seven on threes. You bait Giannis into seven threes. I think you're in good position anyway. And then when he gets to the line, he shoots 14 free throws, but he makes only half of them. Did make two big ones. Does get five blocks. Like, he he made he made work. Like, he did plenty. But you did just enough to kind of disrupt kind of the focal point for them, even though other guys stepped up to kind of fill that void. Overall, Milwaukee outshoots Dallas from the field 47% to 42%. Outshoots them from three 30, at 34%. That is 15 of 44 from Milwaukee. Dallas, meanwhile, at 17 for 53 is 32%. Uh, Dallas at the stripe. They don't shoot as many free throws, but much, much better. Milwaukee shoots 23 of 34 for 68%. Meanwhile, Dallas goes a stellar 23 of 25 at the line. Dorian Finney-Smith misses one of those in like the last four seconds. Uh, and so, really, I think Luka missed one earlier in the game, too. So, those are your two misses. Dallas nails at the line, and that that was astronomical for them. They have been fantastic at getting to the line throughout this. I think they were averaging 35 free throw attempts per game coming into this one, so they only get 25 here. Next closest was L.A. Lakers at 33, I want to say. Uh, 33 attempts per game. So they'll close that gap a little bit here, but Dallas at the very least converted well here. Um, Dallas protected the ball. Six turnovers compared to 13 from Milwaukee. Out-assisted Milwaukee 37 to 26. They are slightly out-rebounded, 55 to 54 in Milwaukee's favor, but Dallas does get more offensive rebounds with 11 to 9 in that edge. Milwaukee destroys them with blocks, Giannis again with five. KP got one, but Mavericks weren't blocking anybody in this game, only two blocks for them. Uh, and fouls perfectly even, 26 apiece. Mavericks had three technicals, so a little bit spicy there, but, you know, it works out. Again... Enjoy this, Mavs fans. This is a special win for them. If nothing else, I talked about how, hey, you're largely locked into that seven spot at this point. You still got to see what Denver's doing because they're playing, they're they're doing work. They had a gutsy, gutsy double OT win over Utah earlier today. And you had Dame and the Trailblazers could have beaten the Clippers, but Dame misses a pair of huge free throws with 18 seconds left that would have taken the lead or at the very least tied if he had made one. And if that happens, then you would have had Denver jump over uh, the Clippers in that case. Instead, I think it holds tight. It's still a half-game lead for the Clippers. So you got a lot going on there. That You can't worry about that, which you have to worry about, other than the fact that you're focusing on just your experience and getting kind of an understanding. When a team has had two weeks to game plan for you and pick apart everything that you like to do and try to make every try and expose every flaw in your game get physical with you and really make you work it's a different experience than anything that you would have seen now maybe luca playing you know and your league would have seen that when he played with real madrid but it's it's a different animal is what i'm saying at the very least it's it's a limited it's a, it's a familial sort of connection in that regard but it's not exactly the same thing so you got to focus on getting that experience, but you want momentum. You don't want to just get in there, get waxed four times, and call it a day. That's not going to advance you. That's not going to really help your cause. You need, at the very least, to find some rhythm, find some momentum and confidence. And you need to basically go in there and say, hey, I don't give a shit. Maybe they're going to beat us, but they're going to have to earn every inch of this first round victory if they do beat us. And that is is how you grow it happened with the same thing in the 2001 playoffs with dirk and the mavs you know they actually did upset 
Stockton and Malone's jazz, and then they went into the second round and faced a very, very good San Antonio team. And yeah, they got beat. They got beaten five. And it was kind of understood going into that series that they weren't going to win that series, but you wanted to see them fight. And you did see enough of that fight so that just a couple years later, there they are in the Western Conference Finals. Growth matters. And if you can actually build upon something like this, which a win like this, you should be able to really build upon. This is not moral victories this is not like well you know like the houston game like well we played great we just kind of shot ourselves in the foot at the end or the phoenix game you know it's not one of those situations this time you didn't just take care of business you earned everything in this this is a situation where you fought through all of the adversity both your own and the artificial of the environment you took care of it and you earned it so Great job. I got nothing more to say on this. Enjoy this, Mavs fans. Don't forget to like this video, drop a comment below, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect, and until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect.